Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of the Smart and Safe Small Business Podcast. I am Alex Oxford from Tax Valet, and we are with Baishue from Air CFO. Thank you so much for joining us today to talk about multi-state income tax returns. Hi, Alex. Thanks for having me. So let's just jump right into it. Tell us a little bit about Air CFO, what you guys do, and who your ideal client is. Who do you work with? Sure. So Air CFO solely supports startups and early stage companies by helping them with their unique financial operational needs as they grow. So we remove the complexity and anxiety around finance, accounting, bookkeeping, and tax work, giving founders and executives the peace of mind to pursue real business growth. While they're out there trying to change the world, we hold down the back office for it. That's awesome. And so I understand that you all have a specialty in multi-state income tax returns. So help the listeners understand what are what is multi-state income tax and why should businesses be paying attention to it? That's a great question. So multi-state income tax liabilities depends on a concept called nexus, which means belongs to in Latin. And there are three kinds of nexus out there, physical, uh, economic and factor-based nexus. So having property or employees establishes a physical presence that could trigger nexus, which requires an income tax return in that state. Another thing that can make a company have a physical nexus uh, is having an active sales force in that state. So when it comes to economic nexus, there are many criteria that uh, the state uses to determine if, uh, if there's an economic nexus within their borders, but it's basically about their sales activity. Then some states have like this bright line thresholds based on the amount of revenue or like the amount of payroll or like uh, the amount of rent they pay in that particular state. And they use those ne uh, factor-based nexus to determine if uh, there's an income tax filing requirement. And so ultimately businesses should stay compliant with all the tax rules or they are risking their right to do business in some situations. Yeah, so long story short, it's so easy for businesses to have income tax nexus in a state, especially in a post-COVID world where we have customers and clients in multiple states. And um, just for the listeners out there, income tax nexus and sales tax nexus do have some similarities, but they are uh, different as well. Um, so, you know, Tell me what can happen if a business has income tax nexus in a state, let's say they're storing inventory in a state or they have employees or contractors in a state and they haven't been paying income tax to the state. What can happen if they're not doing that? That's a great question. And it's definitely something that businesses should be very careful about. So, uh, so ultimately the business could receive state notices on missed income tax returns. And unfortunately, most times there are penalties and interest associated with the with late filings. So um, again, like I was mentioning earlier that businesses should stay compliant because otherwise they're risking their right to do business in, in certain states. Yeah, and not only are there penalties and interest, but it's just a total buzzkill to have to go and clean up taxes for the past 10 years and 20 different states. It's, it's not exactly the most fun thing to do. So, yeah. you know, there's so many new business models nowadays, and there can be companies that are less than a million dollars a year in revenue, but because of their business model, they might have income tax nexus in a bunch of different states maybe because they have remote employees, maybe because they have a physical presence with inventory, who knows. In your mind, when is the right time, maybe in terms of the age of the company or the size of the company to really be taking a look at this and looking at it seriously because uh, the liabilities and the penalties and interests start becoming significant? Who, sh who should really be paying? Obviously, if you have nexus, we want you to be paying income tax in the state, but when does it start to really make sense and there's a bright light flashing? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think the timing could be as soon as they start having their first employee who lives and works outside of their home state, or as soon as they start having their first sale outside, outside of their home state. 
So because like uh, I was saying earlier, employees could trigger physical nexus um, filing requirement and uh, their sales could trigger that economic nexus presence in, uh, in the particular state. So it's a good idea to start thinking about sooner rather than later. So as soon as they have employee sales outside where they incorporate it, I think it's a time to start thinking about it. All right, so let's say that you're a business uh, listening to this right now. What is one action that you would suggest listeners put into place right now that can help them solve this problem? Sure, I think um, I would start uh, by tracking state exposure as soon as possible. Like you can do that on an Excel spreadsheet. So just list out where you have payroll sales and use tax registrations, uh, doing business registrations. So like just start that spreadsheet and, and kind of it gives you a summary view of your state exposure. And then um, based on that, you can sort of see like what are the biggest states where you have presence. And then uh, you can look on those state Department of Revenue websites. They uh, have Nexus guidance on those websites. And I would encourage the business um, operators to review those guidelines there. And if I understand correctly, this is something that Air CFO can help its clients with, right? You guys can help with the exposure analysis and Nexus analysis for multi-state income tax. Yes. So when whenever we work with a new client, especially during the onboarding process, uh, these are the questions we definitely ask, like, where do you have payroll? Where do you have offices, warehouses? And uh, we kind of go through that process as a, like exposure analysis and to identify the risk and to kind of advise client where you should be thinking about filing. So uh, what else would you like to add when it comes to how you guys help businesses with multi-state income tax? Uh, is there, are there any details about packages that you offer? So uh, we also do federal returns. Uh, every mm -hmm. business needs a, to file a federal return. So we definitely do that. And then um, on top of the federal return, we, uh, as I was saying, as part of the onboarding process, we ask for their uh, state exposure and then so we'll see what ends up is uh, like the client decides to file in terms of jurisdictions, you know, federal and plus whichever state that makes sense for them to file. And then we kind of examine, uh, you know, how much we are, how much work we are doing, so to speak. And then, um, and we also have this uh, back office accounting service. We also have this outsourced CFO service. Uh, so we'll see what service lines the client wants to sign up eventually. And then we actually do offer like a bundle discount if um, uh, they end up choosing more than one service line. So it's kind of like a case by case scenario, but um, um, we are kind of like a, you know, like a one stop sh uh, shopping experience, I guess. You can pick, uh -huh. you know, accounting, finance, and tax services. And we, um, we can take care of all of things for the for clients. That's great. And so how should listeners get in contact with you and with Air CFO if they're interested in learning more or getting started? Sure. Um, so Air CFO has a really cool website that I encourage everyone to check out. So just search uh, aircfo.com and then there's a link that is called schedule a call. So click on that. You can get in touch with us or you can just email tax at aircfo.com and that comes to our inbox and we monitor that regularly and we will respond as soon as we can. Well, that's great. Thank you so much, Baishuya. Really appreciate your time today and looking forward to catching up with you soon. Thank you, Alex.